we've been talking about the black agenda because I see all the time, no black agenda, no. I'm like, what's the black agenda? Okay, mm. different groups, disparate groups have different things that they want to see happen with no earthly idea about how to make that happen. So let's start with who gets to deliver this agenda. Mm. I think we should have a seven-person council. I think we should have a seven-person council. Because right now, who's the black leader? Who who gets to determine if we have an agenda, how does it get to, you know, because they all have their people that they're comfortable with, that they like, but who may not get anything done. Mm. So I'm going to give you the seven, I'm, I'm going to start and give you seven people that I think should be on a council of black folk who will deliver the black agenda to whomever is in office. At the top is Dr. Greg Carr. I yeah. think Dr. Greg yeah. Carr, law degree, history degree, head of the Africana department at Howard. We have the president of Howard who's going to be on. He's got tentacles everywhere. He's connected to hip hop. He's connect So he can come in, have a full spectrum of understanding of what needs to happen because he knows what has happened in the past. Sitting next to him will be Larie Favors. <laughs> Since she will not be on the Supreme Court, <laughs> I'm literally depending on her to make sure that, the, because I know Larie's going to fight for us. She has Sankofa Those are, that love. That is true. She, that I, know, is true. I know you love us. Yes. And, you know, I don't need to be on it if you're on it. I don't need to be there because I know you got it. Mm. And I could do other things because we need to be strategic. Yeah. Is it better I'm to have me to be nominated? Sit be, right. <laughs> Is it better to sit behind the mic and deliver messages? Right. I think so. I think I'm good at that. You fight. Yeah. And you fight dirty. <laughs> and we got words. She, she got it all. So those are two people that I think should be on. I'm going to also put... Dr. Buster Sori's on there ah. because he's a man that I have witnessed build a community that could have been gentrified, mm. but is now beautiful and it's didn't get overtaken. The housing, the public housing projects, some of the best housing projects I've ever seen in my entire life. Mm. He's got condos, nursing homes. It's a full community built by the community. He had a, um, as they started developing, he had a, a answer center where people got to come in and talk about what they wanted to see in their neighborhood. Mm. So he has vision. No one really talks about him because he's busy working. He can do that. I want sitting next to him, Robert Smith III, just because I think uh. we need somebody that can move in places that most of us can't. He's part of that old boy network. They let him in. He's a yeah. billionaire. Yeah. I don't care who he's married to. I know he knows how to get stuff done, and he must care a little bit because he did what he did with Morehouse. Right. I just think he needs to be there. Yeah. So that's four. What y'all got? I got Melody Hobson. And let me explain why huh. I say Melody Hobson. I think Melody Hobson is co-CEO of of, um, of Ariel and Ariel Investments. Is, is she the, married to John Lucas? She is married She is married to George Lucas. I, I thought it was George. Who the hell is John Lucas? Oh, basketball coach. Yeah, basketball coach. Uh -huh. Player. Sorry. Hey, John but Lucas. But she has been on the board of Estee Lauder. She's on the board of Starbucks. She's on the board of all of these organizations. She's what, She's the only African-American woman who is, who is at the helm of a company on the New York <laughs> Stock Exchange. Melody Hobson has also committed her money as well as um, tons of the Lucas Foundation money to um, closing the racial wealth gap. She's been talking about educating people of color um, on how to handle money and financial literacy and financial education. That's been something that she and the folks at Ariel Investments have been supporting for years and years and years. Ariel Investments is an African-American owned company that has billions of dollars under in, under management and they've never had a scandal, never had an issue. I think Melody Hobson is a black woman who is still very much a black woman regardless. I don't care who she is married to. I don't care how much money she has made. She's a woman who has no problem talking about the fact that she lived in a household where it was uh, where it was not certain that the lights would be on at the end of the month every month, right? And so I think that she has not moved far away from that. I love her. I love the way she moves. I love the way she talks about race and ethnicity in spaces where people are uncomfortable. I love about that it. choice. Mm. I love that That's choice. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. What you got, I would put, uh, and I didn't come with a list of people, but if I'm thinking about structure, I would want Rakia Lumumba or somebody from. I her was camp. gonna no. So let me. Can I modify that? Yeah. I was gonna put Ron Finley, ah, who's connected to Rakia. Yes. So what yes, I'm yes, thinking yes. is people who have other connections. So he yeah. and Rakia work together. Yep. She's part of the poor people's campaign yep. movement. Her yep. her father, her brother, they're they're dope individuals. Right. Shout out to them. Yes. Ron Finley because he has that social justice 
farming thing. Yes. And we need someone who's going to advocate for mm -hmm. us planting some ish everywhere. Yeah. He just yeah. did something yeah. amazing. We need to have him back on, actually. He's co coalesced a bunch of people to spread this n notion of having the government mm. actually come in and fund some of the farms, yeah. uh, the, the the urban gardens, I guess yeah. we call them. Yeah. So Lord knows they fund in uh, agriculture, mid mid big West, ag. Right. Midwest farms, right. which are largely owned by, white, owned by white folks. Right. And not the black farmers. But I, I like Rakila Mumbo because yeah, like she has an too. understanding of worker co cooperatives and I think a lot of times we forget that capitalism is not necessarily friendly to black people but within this space we can have cooperatives that really do tap into a legacy of black activism um, Asa Hilliard a number of folks who were involved in the cooperative movement they and you know people get scared off by the socialist label but the reality is worker owned cooperatives have been fundamentally a part of black economic uh, stability I think she has an intimate understanding of that we see what her father uh, may he rest in peace and what her brother are doing down in Jackson um, and I think that connection to Ron Finley is, is powerful so I would like to see someone like her I like in that. that space as well. I like it. We need a different approach to how Absolutely. we employ black people. And I was mm -hmm. I was thinking about maybe bringing somebody in from, uh, but this group has to understand the mission. Yeah. And while you know while we can disagree on you know certain things like we just disagreed on Bloomberg or whatever, there has to be an understanding that the goal here yeah. is to deliver an agenda that actually will help. Yeah. All black people yeah. or most black people. Yeah. I would also add Latasha Brown to that list because her or Stacey Abrams. But I see Stacey. If, if she's, she's going to be in government. If she's going to be yeah. right. If she's going to be yeah. at the VP point, then I would see like a Latasha Brown because her Black Voters Matter campaign and the ability to energize and educate black voters about how to manipulate the vote. Not And I guess manipulate is might even not be the right word. How to actualize the vote in a way that is going to be directly targeted to our interests, I think is very important because we still live in a space where electoral policy matters and she's someone who approaches that from a black centered space could you not bring that in so here's what I'm thinking everybody mm. here has tentacles outside because I'm thinking maybe a leave a brown on there vet Nicole Brown somebody that's ah, in Hollywood oh see what yeah, I'm saying so we're hitting so, all the industry that's what I'm saying yeah. because you can bring in that you yeah, can bring because yeah. and this is you know when you think about we need boards, somebody black tech too then Yes. Yeah. Well, Melody, uh, yeah. she's finance. And she's more on the funding side of yeah. it, you know? Or yeah, she, she's more yeah. on the funding side. So mm -hmm. who would be the... So, And this is the thing, though, because part of the agenda is that you just have to have an understanding that we need money yeah. federally yeah. to put aside for tech. Mm. I think everybody on this list pretty much understands. I, I'm sure Robert Smith yeah. probably does oh, with yeah. his engineering background. I'm sure... Mm -hmm. Uh, Melody Hobson does. Um, I, I wanted to put a Hollywood person on there, whether it's Viola. I, I like Yvette Nicole Brown because she's such an activist. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. she really likes us yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And she comes from a place where she understands the things that you're saying in terms of like not, not you know, having everything growing yeah. up you yeah. know yeah. so there's all these different layers and levels and I and I wanted there to be you know a broad spectrum of folk coming from different industries so maybe we replace somebody with a tech person I don't know but mm. this is how we need to think about it yeah you know because in the past has been Jesse Al NAACP Urban League and once they get their cookies I'm just being straight this is the day to be honest once they get what they need up oh, all right our job is to keep the Negroes quiet so we'll do some things, but there hasn't been wholesale change in the last 50 years. Yeah. I think what's um, one of the things that I like about this is having them as a council. And what I would want to see as a part of the council is because, like, if you were to ask who are the Jewish leaders, like, mm -hmm. I don't know what their names are. If you were to ask who are the, the leaders for any other community, I have no idea who they are. Yeah. But what they have in other communities are institutions that build pipelines of leadership in every single industry. So I like the idea of having this council. Coupled with the council, I would want to see, um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with the indivisible groups, like the group that they basically were former Obama uh, operatives who came out and literally put together a manual that you can download to this day yes. that it basically explains here's step one, step two, step three, step ten on how you address your elected official, how you present your agenda, how you implement your agenda, how you hold them accountable in a way that is so practical. It is so practical. Um, and I would like to see that happening in mass across, so like a part of your Sunday school education, somebody actually hit me on Twitter. They were like, thank you, Sister Larie, because our Sunday school now has black history. We need a curriculum. Like I want to see in Sunday schools, in temple 
couples here's after prayers. Here, yeah, here's how you download it. Let's go over the steps. So here is we we heard the council. The council said these are some of the agenda items or these are the things that they're thinking about. Here's how we're going to implement that in Chicago, in Ohio, in Youngstown, in Philly, in Brooklyn, and everybody on the same page. Whatever your Sabbath is, you couple that Sabbath with political and civic engagement. You have your lessons after your services, your temple, your prayers, what have you, your praise and worship, and then we move as a beast. Yeah. As opposed to individuals. Vacation Bible School takes on a whole oh, new meaning. Vacation Bible School. Mm. Yeah. That was a thing. Could I add, could you, what, what, what both of you just said made me think of of two other two Well, other let's people, make it nine then. Two like other, the Supreme Court. <laughs> two other people that represent entities that, that I think are, are really germane to what you what you just, both just said. One is um, I, I think about organizations that refuse money sometimes and i mm-hmm. and i feel like they, if you have the if you are out here refusing money then you're really that's a litmus test for me right mm-hmm. um but the work that folks like color of change are doing oh yes i definitely mm-hmm. i think yep. i immediately think about rashad robinson yes. because he represents lots of different parts of True. the the african-american yes. experience yep. Yep. and um and i and from tech i think i think about I go back to her all the time, Kimberly Bryant, yes. um, who mm. built who built Black Girls Code, and who who when you know though, when they were sent trying to buy her, um, you know, write the checks to her, she would turn that money down, and she would say, "You're not going to write a check to me for one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, and then write a check to the white organization for a million, for a million, mm. and then put our face on the on the website." Or you're not gonna wait until you're in that you're in trouble in the in the media and try to use us and our name and what this mission is yeah. for that. We will refuse that money. Mm. That to me is the <laughs> level, and not to mention that you know what she's built at Black Girls Code is gonna change is gonna change technology in the next ten years yeah. immensely. Th- this is how we need to start thinking. And as you put the council together, I don't think they should be public. Mm. I don't think anyone should know who they are. Mm. Because trust and believe there are black there are Jewish leaders. Oh yeah. They know who they are. Exactly. We don't know who they are, but they know who they are. And this is what I'm saying. It's almost like putting up the bat signal, Mm. you know, when it's time to deliver, we know who can deliver the message and maybe one person delivers the message, but they get in a room every month and discuss. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think because the way it's been happening, things have been backdoor deals have been made with us not being a part of the discussion. And I'm like, even in this room, I'm like, I'm putting together the people I think, but I'm limited. Mm. Now you brought Rashad in, who I wouldn't have thought of, but when you said it, I was like, of course. And sometimes people only dip in the well that they're familiar with yeah. or what yeah. they're used to, or what they're comfortable with. But black people are not monolithic and yeah. we need a wide spectrum of people who are on the same page about this moving forward, yeah. but also can bring different elements. Can we be- don't have a doctor on that list, a medical person. Well, let do we have a medical person? No, we don't. We need somebody. Mm-hmm. Doctor Wayne Frederick. All right, <laughs> put him on, and then move Doctor Gray Carr off. No, 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 right. no, 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 no. Because we got, we got. We, Robert Smith or Melody Hobson could come off, so we can get a medical person in there. All right, let's take off Robert Smith because mm-hmm. yeah. I like Mel- Melody. Mm-hmm. All right. 